now we're going to go uh, take the actual drum out and change the drum itself. Uh, this is the Corona cleaner, so I'm going to pop the, the green tab off, the green knob, and this is a cap which has the plug. You just stick a small screwdriver in here, and simply pop that off. That exposes the wire which you unplug. Now you have two screws, one here and one in this hole uh, above the green arrow area. There are two machine type screws, long, stainless steel they use on these. So uh, I hope this shows up in the camera. This is what the screws look like here. The stainless steel is always use a magnetic screwdriver. And then here is a little tab right here, which I just push on that and that's going to let that cap pop off. But I'm going to kind of hand feed the wire through here at the same time. Okay, this lets this auger flow freely. And now we're going to take out these two machine type, uh, I'm sorry, these are not machine type, these are uh, plastic sheet metal style screws. Which there's two of these, and uh, I'm going to slide this cover off, exposing this area. Now, the drum, this is just free floating here, but on this side here, there's a little, I'm just going to take my fingernail and flip that over, and I'm going to slide the drum unit away from the developer unit. It's real simple. Got a couple of shafts here and a couple of holes. Basically, they go like so, and then snap the back, and then put this puppy back on. <clears throat> okay, we're well, leaving that off for now. We're going to, uh, this is a drum clip. We're going to squeeze these and pull the white tap off, slide, and if it doesn't do it, you gotta give it a little help, a little tap with that shaft. The shaft comes out the back. Okay, now I'm going to take the drum and set it aside. It's the old drum. And here it looks pretty decent and here, pretty clean. It's just that the drum had signs of wear. Right here, this is an anti spill Kevlar, which really shouldn't be, nobody should be concerned with, but again, I'm going to take a break because I'm going to vacuum a little bit of that out because I like my jobs to be fairly neat. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're going to go ahead and put the new drum in. Uh, most of the drums in the back will have a bushing. The bushing is blue. Let me unwrap this drum first and find a bushing over here. There's one. There's a plastic bushing that goes in the back of the drum. I've used them with and without this bushing and it doesn't seem to make any difference. But we're going to put one in anyway. I noticed that when I took the drum out there was no bushing there. So basically this is what the back of the drum looks like and this is the bushing. And we're going to slide that in like so. Okay. And now I'm going to take the protective paper off, set one side down, and just let me rotate this around so it can be seen over here on this side, though I usually work from the other side. Well, actually, I'm not even a copier technician. I'm doing this as a hobby. And um, I'm going to slide this in like so. And then in the bushing, there's a little indentation, and basically you just slide this up. I'm going to have to turn this around because I'm used to using it this way. And uh, if this can be seen, I'm not sure if it can or not, there's a little tab here. I'm going to push that in until it lines up with the drum. Bingo. If it looks good or feels good, I'm just going to rotate it around. It feels great. Now back to this side here. I'm going to put the, there's a bearing in here where sometimes they'll pop up and you can show them back, back in. I'm going to push this in until it snaps. It didn't snap, it's just sliding freely. So that means that this bushing, I'm sorry, the bearing is not, it came out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of push that in a little. I'm going to push the shaft on the other side of the drum out because when I push this plastic drum clip here, I want to hear it snap into place. Okay, it snaps because now I have to squeeze it to get it out. 
you can't hear it very much, but I don't like that either. So I'm going to use a little more pressure here. There, there's the snap on here. Listen. That's the snap on. And everything free turns. Okay, that's basically it as far as changing the drum goes. It's really simple. And I'm going to slide the developer unit back on here. And this bearing, there's another bearing here that falls out. It goes like so. I'm going to put this off. Next, we have to slide this puppy on. This has uh, got a bearing in it. Uh, that we're going to slide this over the black or white uh, cleaning rod. And now we're going to go ahead and put our sheet metal style plastic screws in. We're going into plastic so you don't want to get too, too tough with them. Just a little snug is fine. And now we got to put the cover on. The cover basically goes like so. There's a hole here where the rod goes through. We slide this over. Make sure that the auger is straight up and down. We're going to help feed the wire through a little hole here. Okay, and then basically what you have is this auger here. Swings here. There's a little uh, knot. A uh, little knob sticking out here, and that cover will go over that. And you can see where it's flush with this, and this area back here will snap in. <laughs> Hopefully, kind of play with it a little bit. That's into place, and while that's just sitting there, we're going to put our two screws back in. tighten either one of them until you get them both started uh, because it's a pretty precise fit. Okay, this one's tight and so is this one. Okay, we're going to put our cleaning, uh, corona cleaning uh, knob back on. We're going to plug developer unit back in and this is a little cover plate optional if you wish you don't really do anything that's more cosmetic than anything so basically that's it on the ground now the drum cleaning blade what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack this I'm going to go this backwards and you can't see there's a bunch of toner dust building up on here on the drum so I'm going to turn it this way to see if the drum cleaning blade is functioning well, which it is. You can tell because it's got a nice clean line here when you go backwards. So there's no need to put a drum cleaning blade on, but um, I'm going to show how it is done by taking the old one off. Instead of putting a new one on, I'm just gonna put it back on. This is basically a wiper blade. It has rubber on it. I'm gonna take a rag and just wipe it off. It's a little yellow. They get yellow almost immediately. Uh, and I'm going to slip back up into place and I have two screws. Two really short screws. They're very short. Okay, I'm going to start them both. I'm going to take the left one first. And then this one. And so if I put a new one on, that's what I would be doing. But there's no need to if it's looking good. Now, on all the brand new copiers that I run across, I do find that uh, sometimes uh, I, I always check the developer, always check the developer level. Sometimes I find it kicked up on one side and I want to, and then I always put the quantity good on it. It's just a habit. Uh, like I said, I'm not a copier technician, it's a hobby, but it's just something I do. So if I run into it again, it's there. But that's basically it to changing the drum. drum. Uh, and a dumb cleaning blade on the uh, Toshiba Studio Series. That's it.